Yeah, welcome back to the Devon Nature Garden and uh, as you can see I'm putting up the different boxes that I've got. <clears throat> These are the ones from CJ Wildlife and they've proven really well in this garden. Um, each year I've put them up they have definitely been the favourites and yes the bees can get through these meshes. Um, there were some people on the group wondering on the Facebook group that is Solitary Bees in the UK they were wondering whether they were any hindrance or not but um, they certainly aren't the bees going in and out of there rather well and I will get some footage later in the year fingers crossed and remember I said I bought these ones well I've blocked off all the holes with some sticks and glued them in um, because that's not cleanable but if you do notice I've drilled in here because in behind here is hollow so I've taken the lid off placed in some um, cocoons which somebody very very nicely let me have some of their cocoons after my little problem and yeah everything seems to be uh, warming up nicely so fingers crossed they'll be hatching in the next few days we've got a few other things going on in the garden uh, it was my wife's birthday and somebody gave her some bee bombs so um, we're gonna go and um, well as it's nice, I'm going to go and dig over an area and then we're going to put those down. Uh, we've got loads of plants, um, seedlings, etc. on the go and corms in pots and everything that will be planted out eventually. So, um, yeah, should we go and have a look at all that lot? Yeah, so this area here, it's not a very big area. Uh, it's going to be dug out. There are Spanish bluebells, which... I want to try and eradicate um, to get other stuff in. I know that they are of some benefit to to the uh, pollinators. Um, but yeah, this area was just a bit of barren waste rubbish. Um, we've got a lot, and I mean a lot, of bindweed in the area. So I'm hoping to get rid of this. There's a few sprouts coming up now, so if I can start digging them out. Um, and then this area will be the bit where the bee bombs are going to go and probably then other stuff planted in here as well. Right, here I am and I'm digging over the bit where the seed bombs are going to be and this little chappy has just come to eat the worms that I'm digging over on the ground thinking it may be the male or the partner I don't know whether it is a male or female on the nest at the moment but yeah not afraid of me at all that's about three foot in front of me love it yeah so that little area should be good um, we'll get on in a minute to the other plants that are going to be going on but this is the pack of the bee bombs which are seed balls not bee bombs just in case anybody's there with, with from the bee bombs um so yeah they're a they're a seed ball um they've got bird's foot trefoil foxglove red clover cornflower vicar's bug loss wild marjoram corn chamomile corn marigold night flowering catchfly so that should give quite a nice display and definitely loads for the bees to go on to so fingers crossed and also um, a couple of those are good larva food for some of the uh, bees and no, butterflies and moths so um, anyway those will be put on never done anything like these before so that will um, be a good experiment, I think. They're naturally protected in balls of clay, peat-free compost. So, yeah, give those a go. I'm quite intrigued myself. There's supposed to be a hundred in there. I'm kind of wondering, do I just put a few into one pot so that I can monitor them so that I know what's coming up? I don't know yet. Anyway, let's get on to what we're doing here. <clears throat> Yeah, so what else are we um are we doing well i'm in the slightly tidied greenhouse just 
don't look off screen over that way because um, it's a bit of a mess. Um, yeah, so what else have we trying to get this garden best all year round for the wildlife involved, mainly the pollinators, to be fair? Um, we have dogs ourselves and we have dogs either side. The people that had the house before bred dogs, so it is no good. Well, we know there are badgers in the area, uh, but they can't get in. But we do have foxes and they come in. Uh, we have bats nearby as well uh, that are definitely roosting in one of the houses and the owners do know about that. Uh, we do want to put a pond in, but um, at the moment we're going to concentrate on pollinators, bees, butterflies, moths, hoverflies, etc. So <clears throat> I'm going for plants that I like and also plants that are going to look good for my wife because she likes to take photos she's got she's into the macro photography and i'm into everything else photography um so here is a selection of these plants now they're not all native um some of them i've bought that will be more beneficial next spring so i shall just go through them so let's go with the tray that i've started um so we have red campion which is going to go in with the seed balls. Uh, there's also going to be another area which uh, those of you that have followed the channel will know that there was an area that we did with wildflowers and bits and pieces and I put down birds for trefoil and other bits and stuff. And We're going to completely dig that over and these will probably be going in there as well. So we have Red Campion, we've got Borage, which that is fantastic. There are a load of seedlings coming up in the garden already. And if I had my way, I would have a massive patch of borage because I've had it flowering when it's a bit warmer throughout the winter. I've had it flowering all winter. Last winter it didn't, but um, yeah. What else have we got? We've got honesty. Um, I've had those as well, but they're biennial, I think. So whatever these come up will then flower next year. The Celia. So for Celia is, we had that and I had to find out what it was because I had a wildflower seed mix that somebody gave me and I spread it all across this one area in the garden and the Celia was absolutely covered in bees all the time. So we are doing more of those. Um, my wife loves plants, she loves flowers. So I've gone for dahlias and in a gin infused evening, <laughs> I went on a buying spree, um, only known by the next morning when I had all the emails coming through saying your bits have been dispatched. So in this pot here and several of the other ones back there, we have dahlia corns. And I then had another email saying from another company that we have more dahlia corms coming. So I have about 25 dahlia corms and they are big ones. So there should be an area full of dahlias. They are all singles. So obviously I wasn't too out of it to, to go for those. So I didn't go for any doubles. So that should make a nice display. Purple Allium. Hopefully, when I put these in, they were already starting to sprout. So fingers crossed, we'll get some nice big globes of flowers for the bees on those. Um, these ones, which are, I always say hostas, but they're hellebores. I've got five different varieties that I've just potted on. So the hellebores will be there. I've already had bees on them in the last couple of weeks. And so hopefully next winter, these five will have grown on and be a substantial size in the garden. Salvias. This one is Caradonna. I have two of these. I went to a, 
um, a garden center, a local garden center, and they had these in uh, on offer. And if you bought four, you got a fifth free, um, I think. Anyway, yes. So Salvia's got two of these. And I'm always looking for the RHS Plants for Pollinators label to make sure that they are good for it. Um, I've got one here that looks like a pink daisy, which is Osteospernum Tresco Purple. Not a clue. Looks nice. And it's got the label on it. Now, Arisimum. I have the bowls mauve in the garden and it is still flowering. I've gone for another one, which this one's Golden Jubilee. I do like the wallflowers. They, I had the bowls mauve and another couple. Uh, the bowls mauves that I've got at the moment, I've had for about three years. And so they are starting to go leggy and wooden. So I'm going to try and get some more of those, definitely. Because uh, they are, the bowls mauve especially, is a winner. Lots of things, lots of things feed off those. So um, I will definitely be getting some more of those and probably some more wild um, wallflowers to make, you know, a better colour. Um, and more of an option for all the pollinators as well. Now, I don't know how to say this one. Is it Norsha Melton, Melton Pastels? Um, look like little tiny pom-poms. You can see that. So hopefully that one will look all right. These ones I've all got two of each. Um, now, pulmonaria. I've got four or five of these dotted around. I really should get them in the ground because they do give a nice cover. Um, and as you can see, the flowers are out now and there have been bees on them today. So those will be good. Now we're going to go to these. I've got two of these. About six weeks ago, I went to a, oh, it was the same garden centre that I bought these from. And this, I saw these dotted around all over the place. Now, they were quite expensive because they were in bigger pots than this, and they were absolutely huge. Um, and all that was showing, there were no leaves, all that was showing were these white bunches of flowers coming off everywhere. Now, obviously, I bought these two. So for next winter, going into the spring, hopefully these two that I've got will be in flower as these were. And it was a warmish day. And we're talking beginning of February. And it was covered in hoverflies and a few bumblebees. So it is not a UK resident. But it is a Edgeworthia Chrysantha Grandiflora. So Edgeworthia, just have a quick Google of it. They do a white one and a red one. So I think I bought one of each. But the bees that were on it were absolutely fantastic. Um, so yes, it's not native. But if it's going to be a benefit to early sort of um, those bees that are up early, then to me, that's a good way. Yes, I, I could go and get loads of bowls mode. I could go and get loads more of these and other flowering stuff, but little tiny bushes, um, these should be quite, quite good in the garden, I think. So um, yeah, right. Well, as you can see, the sun is actually out. It's mid-March. And I think I'm going to have to uh, crack on and tidy up the rest of this greenhouse. So I'm going to leave it there. And I should... Right, back in the greenhouse to finish this video off. Um, <clears throat> it's been a couple of weeks, I think, now. And um, since I told you I was planting up the seeds, and as you can see, things are happening. So what have we got? Well, the phacelias have gone absolutely mental. So much so that um, they did, they were in this one here and they all went extremely leggy because I didn't know they were going to, um, didn't know they were going to come out. I was going to say hatch then, but that's completely wrong. Uh, I didn't know that they were going to sprout so quickly and they were 
up here and all falling over. So I had some more, put them in, and they're already going a bit mental. So I have a few trays here, which I'm putting individually, and they're going to go on the top rack of my greenhouse so they get a lot of full sun, so that they won't be anywhere near as leggy. Now, <clears throat> I found them because I left it a few days, and these are my Rudbeckia, like the daisy type things. Um, yeah, we've had a little slimy fella in here somewhere. I found them. I've gone through all of the trays, all in underneath the little gaps in underneath here. I have, um, I've put them outside to have some natural stuff, and then I'm putting this up on the top shelf. So, as I said, we did have the Phacelias in here. These are the Honesty, which are coming along nicely. I've put these in a sunny position, so these shouldn't go any more leggy. Um, as I say, they're leaning towards the light at the moment, so I'm going to turn them around when I put them back. For some reason, I've only got two borage, but they normally come up with no problems whatsoever. So I'm hoping that they do their do soon. I have got others in the garden anyway, but um, yeah. And the red campion is going absolutely mental. So that is it for me for a minute. And I'm not going to do like a lot of channels do once a week or anything like that. I'm just going to put stuff up as and when I can. So uh, next weekend is Easter weekend and it's looking like it's going to be a complete and utter washout. So I won't be doing anything in the garden that weekend. But I may be in here in the greenhouse doing some more because I do have these two which have, um, what's this? I've got some marigolds, got some aster, some wild marjoram, sweet rocket, meadow clary and forget-me-nots which there's nothing there. And I also have some seed bombs, which I'm trying to bring on inside. And there is always already up that top corner. Oh, hang on. No, let's not do that. Drop the phone there, up the top corner there. There was already something sprouting. God knows what it's going to be. So yeah, I'm going to leave you with it and uh, say happy gardening to you all and see you on the next one. Cheers for now, bye bye.